Jody Wood, Breezing with Beerman. I'm here with Poonam, Poonam Bakar, and she's here to talk about embracing your emotional pain. Now, what does that mean exactly, embracing your emotional pain? So, Jody. Well, I know we've been talking, we've been working together on for, for a while, and I um, just want to you know, hear it from the source. Right, so source. I, we've been talking, and yeah. I've been talking about um, how I want to get this message out there and be able to help people to the extent that I can. Right. Um, in maybe awareness or realizing that there is something that we all have that is called emotional pain. And what I mean by embracing it is that um, from something that I probably didn't realize till my late 30s is that, um, you know, when you go through life, it's a journey. And you hear all these people say randomly, you know, we each have our own journey. And I probably didn't understand that more until I was in my late 30s mm. and faced um, a lot of obstacles um, throughout my 20s and 30s and realize that what that exactly means when we say that we're, um, we each have our own journey. Right. So my, the concept that, I ha uh, that I've titled Embracing Your Emotional Pain is when we have physical pain, you can put a Band-Aid over it. If someone breaks their leg, they can have a cast. But a lot of the times when there's emotional pain, whether it's bullying, whether it's um, you're going through a bad marriage or there's financial loss or there's um, other things that cause you emotional pain, there's no way of, there's no mechanism to deal with it as right. such, right? People uh, growing up, um, people may say, pull your socks up, get on with it. Yeah, keep your chin up, right? keep your sweep it under the table. Right. right, and that's, I think, growing up, that's what we do. And I used to think it was very specific to where I came from, being South Asian, um, from immigrant parents who came to London, and I thought that that was just something that was prominent in the South Asian community, that you don't discuss things and you keep it inside of you, and you know everything's about reputation. But as I've grown up, so to speak, I will say it's across the board that it's it's not specific to my community the way I thought right, so. Right. Sure. And I think one of the most shocking things for me was. Growing up, you envision people who, that are facing problems, whether they're emotional, financial, whatever, you expect them to come from a certain type of household. That's right. just the visual that you're given, right? right. Um, in the right. media and everywhere. And I can tell you, I come from a household in which I have very supportive parents, extremely loving family, and that I'm very close to today. And I think that was one of the biggest shocks to my system that, wait, when things happen, that you're supposed to come from a certain type of background or a certain type of um, environment that you face these, whether it's a divorce or whether it's financial loss or whether it's health issues. And my point of saying um, embrace your emotional pain is that at least in my journey, I have felt that because there is no mechanism to teach people to deal with their emotional pain, we grow up sweeping things under the rug and not accepting that we're in pain. We go out into the world and we face and we put on this great front. Right. Um, I can tell you my own life, I went out partying, I was hanging out with friends, pretending that I had this great life. But in essence, the pain that I was feeling inside um, was so deep that and I was Of course, nobody could see it. Nobody that. could see it. And there was no willing, that, that you couldn't, I wasn't, able to accept that I was going through this pain. And mm. as a result of that, you don't, because we don't embrace the emotional pain that we feel, and because people outside can't see it. It almost makes it worse. It though. makes it worse. And it's, it's almost like the example I give, and this is just an example, but when people go through, when somebody dies, there's a grieving process right. and everybody's there, everybody's with you because they can physically see a death has taken place. When you go through something like a divorce or a loss financially, nobody can see, they can hear it, they can see that, but nobody really knows how to react to it. And you almost go, you almost go through life feeling that you have to put on a front, that you have to pretend everything's okay. 
even prior to getting divorced, a lot of us pretend that everything's okay and that um, you're not going through a pain and you put on this front. Yeah. But what I've learned through my life at least is that by doing that year after year after year, it compounds and every decision that you make in life then is subconsciously tainted with this, this feeling of that you're less than. You're right. less than because you don't have the married life and the 2.2 kids and you know and the, the white huge fence and exactly. The whole bit. Yeah. So you feel that you're less than, and every decision that you make thereon in life is tainted by this feeling that you're less, you're worth less than, and that um, you don't, you're not aligned with your true self. And un until you really face that pain that you're in, whether it's because you've been bullied, whether it's because of a divorce, whether it's because you suffered financial loss, or whether you, it's because you, you've you um, got something else going on in your life that is extremely emotional that you can't come out and express. Right. It, it, you carry it with you, and you carry it through with you in your life. And I'm, my point is that if we all learn to accept that it's okay not to be perfect, <laughs> that it's okay to be depressed, it's okay to have issues and that we're not less than, yep. I think it would make our world a little better. And I think that the people going through things would be more willing to reach out yeah. and recognize that it's okay to say that I'm not okay. Yeah, I'm in pain, I'm hurting. I mean, there's a lot of you know, suicides rates are really high and people are afraid to reach out and just say, you know, I need help. I think it's a combination of people are afraid to reach out and people don't know how to reach out. So the person going th through, dif through different emotions cannot, feels helpless because mm, there really yeah. is no mechanism. When you're sick, you go to the doctor. Right, and it's okay when, to talk about it. I have diabetes, okay. Well, right, but it's not, it's not a common thing to say, hey, I went to see my therapist and right. my therapist thinks I'm depressed. Right. It's like, no, you shun it and you keep it quiet. Right. Or um, if you're on antidepressants, you don't. It, there's a shame attached to that. Yeah, it's not. It's different than saying, "Hey, I broke my arm," or "I'm right. really sick." People can relate to that, and people know how to reach out. But in situations like this, I don't think people. I think it's both sided. People don't know how to reach out, and people who are going through it don't know where to go, or don't understand that. Which is something that I've learned. Don't understand that. The answers truly do lie within us. We just have to find the strength to look deep inside and find those answers. And when we're willing to embrace that pain, accept it and deal with it, I think that's the meaning of moving forward in life. Yeah. And I think if that's a message that people that are in pain could get, that it's okay, that you're not, it's okay not to be perfect. Right, of course. And you're not alone. Right, and I, I think we could I would love to get the message out to help people to say, it's okay. I mean, honestly, I had the first time that I ever realized I was depressed was probably in 2005, 2006. Mm -hmm. And I remember when somebody said it to me, I was like, you've got to be in my head. No, I've got- said that you're depressed? You have depression? Yeah, I went to see my doctor because my emotional pain had taken on physical manifestations. Uh, My body was hurting, I was in pain, I wasn't wow. willing to accept certain things. Jeez. And when somebody had said that, in my mind, it was like, that's impossible. I have a loving family, I'm in a marriage, I've got two children, I've got, I don't have a lack of money. How could I be depressed? And I think the image of somebody that is, is portrayed as being depressed and the pain that people carry that they're not dealing with that lead to the depression um, is something that we need to talk about more. Yeah. And something where people really do need to understand that they're not alone. It's not just them going through them, through it. And there is a way out. And so what sparked all this for you? What, what made you start wanting to talk about this? I think um, December 2011, I became um, paralyzed um, through health issues. Wow. And I had at that point gone through a very rough time. I had um, at that point, I had gone through my, I'd gone through my second divorce. I had um, 
lost a business, I was losing my home, I had basically been stripped of any financial security that I had, any emotional security that I had, and I was a single mom with two children. And I think at that point, metaphorically, I was brought to my knees, and I knew life wasn't working for me the way that it should be, or the way that I thought it should be. How does somebody like me with support, with family, with friends, still make these decisions? And I think the first time was when I came out of hospital and I realized in February 2012 that my life was not meant to be this way. And I had to really go down deep and see where was I responsible. So it's very easy mm. when we go through things to blame to be angry, to be resentful, why me, why am I going through this, and why is, why is it always me, mm -hmm. um, rather than say, hey, I'm hurting, hey, these are the issues that I'm having, or this is the pain that it's causing, and it all compounds till finally the universe took everything away from me, mm -hmm. and you have to face the truth and the pain, and you have to figure a way out there, and when, at that point, it's either sink or swim. But I remember being at that point and not really knowing how to deal with this. Yeah. Um, so what did you do? Funny enough, I went down a very spiritual path. Um, I went to see a spiritual advisor who, um, you know, I think I've joked about this with you, who said to me, um, there's such a thing as forgiveness and unconditional love. And I really did think it was a crock of shit <laughs> that yeah. what is forgiveness and un unconditional love? And I'll, I'll tell you today, the truth is, it's easy to say so-and-so hurt me, so-and-so did this, or so-and-so did that and play the blame game. Yeah. But the truth is, whether that's true or not, you, you're still in pain and you still have to deal with it. And at some level, you have to forgive and move on and not live in the past. And I think when you truly learn to do that is right. when the healing process starts. Hmm. But it's not something that we're taught how to do. Right. You just have to get there somehow. And that's why I want to get this message out that so how are you going to get this message out? What's your plan? Well, um, the first thing is I'm t finally, as you know, it's taken me two years, but yeah, I'm finally taking the plunge to do this on November 28th at the Arts Council of Princeton, mm -hmm. just to put a small speech discussion together regarding um, the process. All right. So November 28th at the Arts Council of Princeton. What time? At seven to nine o'clock. Seven to nine. And... Uh, I think it's going to be something that be, could be, be the beginning of something that's going to be very powerful. And I've been telling you this for a couple of years now. You and have, I, and I, I thank you for having the faith. I think it's really an important message. And for somebody that's been through it and somebody that you know, has a, and a professional like yourself that can be inspiring to many, many, many people. And uh, I think it can make a huge difference in the world. I really do. And I thank, thank you, you for talking about it, being, being brave enough to talk about it. It's awesome. Thank you, Jody, for your support. Thank oh. you. Thank you for coming on, and, and good luck in, on November 28th. Princeton Arts Council of Princeton, 7 to 9 p.m.